Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us here tonight on News Channel 5 Plus for a very special edition of Medical Monday, where tonight we are talking about hearing loss and hearing solutions. If you're ha having trouble hearing me now, this is the show for you. Joining us tonight is expert Dr. David Genevico. He is an audiologist and owner of Advanced Hearing Solutions, hanging out with us all night tonight, taking your questions. Feel free to call in, ask us any questions you need to know. Maybe share some stories with us tonight as well. Doctor, we appreciate you being here this evening. Thanks, it's great to be here. We have a lot to talk about. This is not your first time on the show, that's right. Right. So let's go ahead and kind of introduce you back to folks viewing uh, okay. the show tonight, a little bit about who you are and your practice. Absolutely, so uh, I am an audiologist. Uh, I have a practice in Mount Juliet, Tennessee called Advanced Hearing Solutions. We were right there in Mount Juliet, the booming metropolis that it is. Uh, got a great location. And I've been an audiologist for over 20 years. We've been in Mount Juliet for about 11 years. And basically what we do is help people hear. It's a great job. That's right. And if, like I said, if you're tuning in tonight, the number's right there on your screen. Maybe some questions that you have tonight. Um, you know, and obviously we're talking about solutions, lots of technology these days, and we're gonna get into that. But first I wanna ask you a little bit about why did you choose this profession? Okay. Well, you know, I actually grew up in an audiologist family. There's not very many of those around, but my father's an audiologist, and I grew up uh, seeing him go to work every day, come home, tell stories. And during college, I actually spent a little bit of time working in the clinic with him and thought, this is a great profession. Uh, it's something that you really get to help people. Uh, I saw him enjoy it. He is, I better not tell his age on the <laughs> camera, but he's 72, still works about 60 hours a week. He says, I'm not going to quit working. I love working, and, and I do too. So it's an honor to get to do what I do. Wonderful. A little background at Vanderbilt University as well, Medical right, Center. Right. So I went to Lipscomb undergrad, uh, go Bison. It should be Bison, not Bisons. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and then went to Vanderbilt, got a master's and got a PhD at Vanderbilt. Also spent five years on faculty at Vanderbilt, teaching in the medical school, doing research on hearing and hearing aids. And that's really kind of what hopefully gives me the expertise to do what I do now. Wonderful. And again, your practice, Advanced Hearing Solutions. We'll get the contact information up throughout the show tonight. Um, let's get right into it. We're going to talk about hearing loss and hearing solutions. And most importantly, some new technology that can help with this. Right, right. So lots of people... When I tell them I'm an audiologist, they say, well, tell me about the newest technology in hearing aids. And most of what we do is hearing aids, although there are some other options out there as far as technology and solutions for people with hearing loss. I think in general, hearing aids kind of have a bad rap. Um, we all know that person who used to sit in front of us at church and their hearing aid squeal, or you know, grandpa who had a hearing aid who never wore it. And I think in general, hearing aids kind of have this negative stigma. It's an old person's problem. Okay guys, I'm 44, I have on a hearing aid right now, you can't even tell that I'm wearing it. And that's real, I do have a hearing loss in one ear. The technology, the size, the features, the things that we can do are so far ahead of what I think a lot of people think of when they think of that stigma of a big ugly hearing aid that mm -hmm. people wear. Now I've been with you hanging out now for about 45 minutes before the show started. I did not notice yeah. that. That's, yeah. I did not and, notice and that. And I can wear, I mean I wear it all the time and most people will be like, you don't wear it. Is that fake? Are you just doing that for TV? No, I, I wear one all the time, but very few people can notice that. So not that size is the biggest concern, <laughs> But when you can take somebody and help them hear better and it's something that's cosmetically appealing that nobody really knows that they have, I think that helps them adopt it a lot more easily. And you know, you, you did just bring up age and uh, the stigma behind, you know, sometimes we, we think it's someone in elderly age that, you know, experiences hearing loss, but you treat children as well. Absolutely. So we treat from age zero to 110. I could tell you some stories about the 101, 102 year olds. I've got great stories, but we don't have time for all those. Mostly what we work with is adults. and I. Think I think a lot of times, as we're saying, people think adults means 90-year-olds. Mm -hmm. I have lots of patients who are in their 30s and 40s and 50s, even 20s, and their problem is not old age. You know, their problem is not that, that they've grown old and they've lost their hearing. It's loud noise that they've been around, it's genetics, it's viruses that might have affected them. Some people are just born with less than optimal hearing, and we can do some great things to help those people. So it's not just 
an older person's problem, but that's a stigma that I think people have a lot. All right. You know, we're going to be hanging out for the next hour here tonight on Medical Monday. This is such a great show because you sitting at home get free advice from a medical expert in the field. And I mean, uh, we have so many uh, great calls that we've had on this show, and really it's about you. Uh, anything you want to know tonight, or even, like I said, share a story, we're happy to hear it. The number's right there on your screen. Uh, now let's talk a little bit about what's new in hearing aids. Okay. We've come a long way. Right. So several things that I'll kind of throw out there. Um, one that a lot of people are probably not aware of is we have what are called extended wear hearing aids now. So this is a hearing aid. You actually go to the audiologist. You come to our office. Myself or one of my, my doctors actually place the hearing aid in the ear canal. You can't see it at all. I could look in your ear and not see this there. You can shower. You can sleep. Um, it's a great solution for people that just don't want to mess with anything. You don't have to mess with batteries. You wear that for eight to ten weeks and then you come back and get another one. So it is extended wear, almost like extended wear contact lenses. Um, it is a great solution for people playing sports. Um, I have some people, we're talking about aging, you know, I have some people that that's the only device they can wear because nobody has to help them put it in. They don't have to, there's no maintenance, they don't have to change batteries. That particular device is called a Lyric. They've been on the market for four or five years. Um, we've had some really, really good success with that. So long-term wear, never take it off, just come see us every few months and we change it. That sounds just extremely simple and just non-invasive, wonderful. To me, simple, you'll hear this throughout what we talk about for the next hour. If hearing aids are simple, people do fantastic with them. If it is this constant frustration or constantly having to fiddle with something or mess with something, I think people are a lot less likely to wear them consistently. So that particular device is very easy and simple and a lot of people like it for that reason. I believe we already have a caller here tonight on line one. Hi there, what's your question for us this evening? My question is, when you talk loud when you're on the phone, I talk to someone, do that mean you got a hearing problem? Well, that's funny. Casey and I were just talking about we that. Were. <laughs> she says she talks loud, but not necessarily. So not necessarily. Um, people have a wide range of volume in their voices. You know, I, I get accused of talking loud a lot too. I talk to people who can't hear on a regular basis, but no, not necessarily. Now, certainly, I think. It, talking loud, speaking loud all the time can be a sign of hearing loss. And the reason is, if I can't hear myself as well, sometimes I will raise my voice a little bit more. I'll tell you a real quick story. Today, just a few hours ago in my office, I had a lady, she has a very significant hearing loss. And she said, everybody is always fussing at me about talking so loud. Well, we got her some hearing aids and are helping her. And she says, now I can tell I really was talking loud and she's lowered the volume of her voice and that happens all the time. So it can be a sign of hearing loss, but not necessarily a lot of us just like to speak loudly. I believe I fall under that category. I constantly feel like I'm talking a little too loud, so I'll work on bringing that down. Sure. But that is a great sure. question and so funny because we were actually just talking right. about that before the show because I like to get my free medical advice right. while you're here too. Might right. as well. Sure. Uh, thank you so much for that call. We really appreciate you tuning in and thank you for giving us a call. Uh, let's talk about so many different brands of hearing aids out there on the market. It's hard to keep up brands yeah. and costs. Let's go into that. Absolutely. So you're going to hear me say this, and you probably won't hear most audiologists tell you this, but I think the brand doesn't matter. And here's why I say that. There are probably... I'm going to say 15 major brands of hearing aids in the U.S. A lot of those are made by some of the same companies, so really four or five or six major companies. They all have really good technology. They all have things, and we, we can talk more about this, like Bluetooth connectivity, uh, waterproof. We've got a lot that are rechargeable, so there's some really cool things that we can do. But you won't hear me say, well, you need to get brand X and not brand Y, and here's why I say that. How hearing aids work is all about the expertise with which they are fit. You can bring me the best hearing aids in the world, most expensive, top of the line, newest technology, but if I, as the audiologist, am not doing my job right, if I'm not making the correct measurements, if we are not making sure that we're making you hear soft sounds better, but keeping loud sounds under control and controlling background noise and all the reasons that people come to see me, if we're not doing the measurements and doing our job right, you can have some really fantastic, expensive, name brand hearing aids that don't work very well. But the flip side of that is, 
with appropriate hearing aids and not necessarily the most expensive but something that's appropriate for that individual if they are adjusted and fit appropriately people can do fantastically with them so I don't dismiss the technology at all I think it's great I can do so much more to help somebody now than I could even four or five years ago but I don't think we want to get hung up on the technology because how it's fit is more important than the brand and the technology and the cost. I know that was one of the main things you did want to discuss tonight that you know technology is wonderful but it's how you use it. Sure. Well we want a wonderful great start to the show here. We've also got a couple options that you've brought in tonight. Maybe some things you want to show sure. us a little bit later. We're going to go ahead and take a quick break but keep it right here. We'll have much more Medical Monday after this break. Keep it here.